Hi everyone, this is John. Welcome back to another episode of our weekly show, The Subcontinent. Our program aims to address important issues in the subcontinent which affect the governments, people, organizations, and the region as a whole. We will try to explain the issues, break down controversies surrounding them, and try to have some external perspectives from experts and people. In this edition of The Subcontinent, we will discuss India-Pakistan border clashes. Kashmir is one of the hottest flashpoints of the world. And with every clash or confrontation, it is getting dangerously closer to igniting a full-fledged nuclear war. The Muslim-majority Himalayan region is held by India and Pakistan in parts, but claimed by both countries in full, except for a small silver that is controlled by China. There are Indian-administered and Pakistani-administered Kashmiris, but none of the two governments nor the residents can live with the status quo. The latest bout of border battles between Pakistan and India took place in mid-November. Artillery and machine gun clashes were reported all along the 740-kilometer ceasefire line that has separated the nuclear-armed rivals for the past 70 years, the so-called Line of Control, LOC. Pakistan and India, as usual, accuse each other for initiating the fight that killed about 15 people and wounded many more on both sides. Kashmiri villages described the skirmishes as the worst and most widespread they had witnessed in months. India just for Marzi at the old Bumper Sak or Mazail Bumper Sata, Mazail Versata, or yeah, up the Sunday, yes, Sarji, yeah, Maratera Choda Garja was the dust made with Jaladi. Denouncing the attack as unprovoked and indiscriminate, the Pakistani military and government said Indian rockets and mortar shells in various sectors along the line of control killed four Pakistani civilians and one soldier and wounded 27, including women and children. It's a serious escalation. We have given them a very befitting reply. There have been massive losses on Indian side in men and material. <laughs> कश्मीर में हमारी मां बहने भाई अजीज और कारे बच्चे आए दिन आपको पता है कि कत्ल हो रहे हैं जुल्म हो रहे हैं उनके खिलाफ इंडिया लेकिन हम मुसलमानों में मतलब कोई ऐसा एक इत्तेफाक इकट्ठा हो कि हम सब मुसलमान भाई इकट्ठे हो के कि एक बन के उनको आजाद करवा दें लेकिन हमारे हुक्मरान हैं इंशाल्लाह और हमारे और जो अजीज और कारे लोग हैं सब मेहनत कर रहे हैं तो उस वजह से तो उनकी आजादी तो सर बनती है तो ये जो कश्मीर है उस पे जुल्म कर रहा है इसका हमें अफसोस है आज दिन हम अखबार में पढ़ते हैं फेसबुक वगैरह पे मोबाइल पे कि आज इतने कत्ल होंगे कश्मीर में आज ये हो गया बहुत मतलब कि अफसोस होता है In Srinagar, the capital of Indian-controlled Kashmir, the Indian military told a different story, saying they foiled an infiltration attempt following suspicious movement in multiple sectors along the line of control. The army said six civilians, three soldiers and a border guard were killed while several other people were wounded on their side. India's allegations of intrusion are vehemently rejected by Pakistan, who says that these attacks are a part of New Delhi's consistent attempts to escalate the situation along the line of control. Pakistan believes that it is India that keeps violating international agreements saying that India had committed more than 2,700 ceasefire violations since the beginning of the year 2020, killing 25 people and causing serious injuries to more than 200 civilians. The latest incident happened a day after Pakistan summoned an Indian diplomat to protest what it called India's violation of a 2003 ceasefire agreement. Two civilians were wounded on the Pakistani side of the border in that exchange. Sardar Masood Khan, the leader of the Pakistani-administered Kashmir, has urged the United Nations and the international community to help solve the issue, warning of a wider conflict. He said that if such hostilities are not stopped, it will be difficult to stop a war between Pakistan and India. 
The UN says it investigates alleged ceasefire violations complaints in a timely fashion within the constraints of a difficult operating terrain, practically stalling any move toward any resolution. Reiterating that the situation at the line of control remains tense and unpredictable, a UN peacekeeping spokesperson told Newsweek that the mandate by the UN military observer group in India and Pakistan has lapsed since the signing of the Simla Agreement of 1972. About a year after the Bangladesh Liberation War that transformed into the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971, then-Prime Minister Indira Gandhi and President Zulfikar Ali Bhutto signed a treaty to put an end to the conflict and confrontation and settle their differences by peaceful means through bilateral negotiations. I believe that there is no problem for 70 years in Kashmir, but this is also a weak point because our government is not taking any action on it. There is no law in the country and many people are dying in the country of the country. We can't do anything, 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 we can't do anything. لیکن اس طرح مار پیٹ ہر جگہ ہوتی رہتی ہے تو اچھا نہیں ہے اور دوسری بات وہ بھی مسلمان ہیں ہم بھی مسلمان ہیں اگر وہ اس طرح کرتے ہیں لیکن مسلمان کے لیے تو ایک بڑی بات ہے کہ اس کا بھائی ہر جگہ قتل ہو جاتا ہے اور ہم ادھر سوتے رہتے ہیں کوئی آواز ہم اس کے لیے نہیں اٹھاتے ہیں Now, for more analysis, we are joined by Mr. Anil Trugunayat. He's a former Indian senior diplomat and an ambassador. And Mr. Abdullah Khan, the managing director of Pakistan Institute for Conflict and Security Studies. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the subcontinent. So, let's start in India. Mr. Trugunayat, from time to time, we see clashes between India and Pakistan on the Kashmir border. Why is that? And what's needed to stop the conflict? Well, it's a historic question. As you know that... Uh when India achieved its independence from the British in 1947, the country was divided between the two. And we used to have more than 590 states, uh, princely states. So they were given the option to join India or Pakistan. Now the Kashmiri king, uh, king who was there, Hari Singh, he decided uh, to join India. And then the Pakistanis sent their forces at that time when the, both the countries were trying to grapple with the thing and they sent the uh, Mazahirs and all that to fight and occupied a large uh, tract of the territory. Uh, and since then, then the, uh, the people intervened and this has remained a problem. Now, as you know, the, if you go by the 26th October 1948 agreement, it is very clear that the Kashmir is has become a part of India because they legally acceded to India where after the Indian forces helped them uh, def, uh, detract the Pakistani Mujahids and Mujahideens and all those people who had come to fight and tribals and all. Since then, India and Pakistan have fought several wars. Now at one time it was referred to the United Nations in the beginning and then it was decided in 1972 with the Shimla Accord that both the countries will decide all their issues, including Kashmir, through bilateral negotiations. Now Pakistan off and on continues to talk and then what happened is that Pakistan, in order to uh, go uh, achieve its objectives, it has started using terrorism as a state policy and that has created the biggest problem and a hiatus in the relationship. We have had wars in 1965, we have had wars in 71, again in 1999. So, since Kashmir is part of India, we had recently uh, abrogated the Article 370 so that the Kashmiris can get the benefit of India's democratic development and the development generally and applicability of all the laws that apply within the Indian state. But what Pakistan has done on the contrary, in 1963, they ceded a part of the territory that they had occupied to China. Imagine now, apart from the fact that they themselves were illegally occupying it, they had also sent it to, uh, given it to China. And now recently, Gilgit Baltistan, they have tried to make a part of their uh, uh, state of their country. Now that is again uh, illegal. So I believe that only option for us is to work together and Pakistan has to contain the terrorism because today it is not Kashmir which is the real issue. The real issue actually is Pakistan's use of terrorism against India. All right, Mr. Tugunayat. Uh, so, Mr. Khan, our guest in New Delhi says that Kashmir is not the issue. What do you think is the issue and how can it be solved? 
Uh, first of all, uh, by claiming that Kashmir is not an issue and the terrorism or anything else is an issue, it is an attempt to actually hide sun behind your finger. Uh, we all know that the main reason, the root cause of unrest in Kashmir is the Kashmir issue, their right of self-determination. And that is the key. And unless that issue is resolved, the issue of violence in Kashmir, we call it freedom struggle, the Indians call it terrorism or whatever they can say, Atankwad or whatever uh, they use the terminology, the basic root cause is actually the right of the people of Kashmir, the right of self-determination. And I would like to uh, tell you that what the, the Indian claim that instrument of accession, which they can never and they uh, had never and they can never produce in the front of the international community, the original instrument of accession, because they actually uh, forced the Maharaja because we, when he was under pressure by the unrest going on in Gilgit Baltistan and uh, parts of Kashmir, so India actually had entered its forces well before the so-called instrument of uh, accession. But before that instrument of accession, uh, the Maharaja had signed a standstill agreement with Pakistan, the state of Jammu Kashmir had become part of Pakistan since uh, uh, partition in Sindan 1947. And then it was India which took it to the UN uh, Security Council. And it was India's repeated pledges that India will allow uh, people of Jammu and Kashmir to exercise their right of self-determination. Now all of a sudden saying that this is not an issue, the issue is terrorism. Please address the root cause. What you say, ask them, why the clashes are going on? I would uh, like to say that since India uh, last year forcefully, illegally annexed Kashmir and made it part of the Indian territory, now they are trying to actually occupy Azad Kashmir, which is the, 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 the part which is administered by Pakistan. So they are now actually trying to uh, uh, do some nefarious design against Pakistan in Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. And that is the reason Pakistan is trying to expel them. And we should actually uh, look at what the UN says. As per the international law, all the bilateral agreements are superseded by the international commitments of countries. So India and Pakistan both have committed that the Kashmir will be resolved as per the UN uh, Security Council uh, resolutions. So, so uh, our Indian friends are generally confusing international community with their, um, uh, you know, uh, stances which cannot be uh, supported by legal argument. So the, the basic fact is, and what the resolution is, and as you asked, how this can be stopped, that can only be stopped when the Kashmir issue will be resolved as per the wishes of the people of Kashmir. And that is the key, actually. Thank you, gentlemen. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this segment and good discussion. Since they gained independence, New Delhi and Islamabad have fought four wars. In 1948, 1965, 1971 and 1991. Three of these wars have been over Kashmir. Tensions soared in February 2019 when Pakistan shot down an Indian warplane in Kashmir and captured a pilot in response to an airstrike by Indian aircraft targeting militants inside Pakistan. India said that strikes targeted Pakistan-based militants responsible for a suicide bombing that killed 40 Indian troops in the Indian-controlled part of Kashmir. But the airstrike killing the militants is largely disputed by the international media and site inspectors. India's cooperation with the United Nations Military Observer Group in India and Pakistan was further urged in a letter sent by Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi to the UN Security Council. The Pakistani top diplomat's letter came ahead of Prime Minister Imran Khan's virtual address to the UN General Assembly. For a second year in a row, the Pakistani leader spoke at length about alleged abuses on the Indian-administered side of Kashmir and warned of potential war, calling on the UN Security Council to step in to prevent a disastrous conflict by implementing resolutions. Mr. President, there will be no durable peace and stability in South Asia until the Jammu and Kashmir dispute is resolved 
on the basis of international legitimacy. Kashmir has been rightly described as a nuclear flashpoint. Indian diplomat Mijito Vinito, the first in New Delhi's UN mission, who walked out of the room during Khan's speech, later insisted on his country's right to the region and asked Pakistan to leave Kashmir. The Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is an integral and inalienable part of India. The only dispute left in Kashmir relates to that part of Kashmir that is still under illegal occupation of Pakistan. We call upon Pakistan to vacate all those areas that it is in illegal occupation of. In his own speech that same day, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi did not bring up the issue of Kashmir. While leaving the subcontinent, the British enabled a division of the country on religious grounds, with the Muslim-dominated regions becoming a part of Pakistan and others staying a part of India. As per the partition formula, Kashmir could have gone to Pakistan as was expected by the Pakistani leadership. But the Hindu king was not ready to make an immediate decision and signed a standstill agreement with Pakistan to keep the flow of trade, communication and travel. The whole bloody affair may have been started by the UK, but the US role in fueling the flames of conflict seem undeniable. The recent skirmishes in Kashmir serve as a momentous warning to the entire world, as a similar rivalry is simmering between India and China in another part of the Himalayas, on the backdrop of a global coronavirus pandemic and a messy post-election United States. As the world's most likely venue for a nuclear war, Kashmir is a contentious issue for Washington's foreign policy since the US is deeply involved with both countries and stuck between them. The US needs its long-term partner India to play a supporting role in blunting China's increasing rise. At the same time, Washington heavily relies on Pakistan as an essential player in the negotiations with Taliban to conclude decades of America's war in Afghanistan. The US donates billions of dollars to both countries annually and has tried a wide array of strategies, but everything turns out to be ultimately in vain. It cannot make India reconsider its often heavy-handed management of Jammu and Kashmir that inspires more militancy. And it also cannot make Pakistan change its policy of negligence about the supposedly banned groups that operate against New Delhi. Given the prospects and perils of the escalating fight for Kashmir, the global community does not afford to feign ignorance and remain indifferent as the planet may be approaching to the precipice of a disaster. Until the two countries, Pakistan and India, आपस में म्यूचुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग नहीं होगी इनकी तो उसके बगैर तो हो भी नहीं सकता क्योंकि जो अपर हमारी जो वो है मतलब अपर कह सकते हैं या जो जो पोस्ट पे हैं अपर लेवल पर हैं असल में मेन तो उन्हीं का इश्यूज है वो दोनों अगर आपस में बैठे और म्यूचुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग के साथ बात करें तो ऑब्वियसली क्यों ना हो सके हल होंगे इश्यूज क्यों नहीं होंगे इसमें तो राजनीतिक पार्टियां जो अपना अपना लाभ उठाने के लिए ऐसा नहीं कर पा रही हैं भाई राजनीतिक पार्टियां सोचती हैं कि हम ऐसा यदि कर रहे हैं तो वोट बैंक की अपनी जो राजनीति है उनकी वो कायम रहे हमेशा जैसे कई मुद्दे और भी हैं भारत में उनको नहीं चाहते कि वो खत्म हो जातिवाद का मुद्दा है या जैसे अभी मंदिर का जो समाप्त हुआ है कोर्ट के द्वारा वो तो मान लो कोर्ट ने उसको समाप्त कर दिया वरना वही मुद्दा था इसी तरह राजनीतिक पार्टियाँ हैं जो अपने अपने निजी फायदे के लिए नहीं होने देती हैं इनको इसका जो समापन या समाधान नहीं होने देती हैं All right, so in the previous segment, we heard from our guests in India and Pakistan. Uh, now let's bring in a Kashmiri voice and talk to Mr. Rafiq Katwari. He's a Kashmiri activist and commentator. Mr. Katwari, welcome to the show. Uh, time and time again, we hear about these clashes between India and Pakistan. What do you think is the source of these conflicts? Time and again, uh, the present regime in New Delhi has been propagating to its die-hard Hindutva followers that Pakistan is the source of all that ails India, that Pakistan is the enemy. This is a deflection and it plays well on the 24-7 news channels where the anchors are very, are the, are the, are the definition of jingoism. And most of these uh, 24 seven news channels are owned by arms merchants who are actually agents of the global arms industry. And India is a big market these days, or at least used to be a couple of years ago 
for the arms uh, market. Now, um, during the last six or seven years that the BJP regime, the Bharatiya Janata Party regime, has been in power, India's economy has declined drastically. These, these clashes are really, at the moment, uh, a deflection by Mr. Modi because India's economy is in dire straits. Mr. Katwari, you earlier said that uh, the reason why this all of this is happening is because the Indian economy is in dire straits. So, what is the ultimate solution for Kashmir? So the ultimate solution, the most democratic solution is self-determination. Okay, respecting the wishes of the people. Now, if the if the powers that be wanted that to happen, it could happen within 48 hours. If there is a will, there is a way. India and Pakistan are nuclear nations. The road to peace in South Asia, in fact, the road to a just solution of the Kashmir dispute and a just peace in Afghanistan is through Kashmir. Either you build a bridge holding hands with the Kashmiri people or you build a bridge over the Kashmiri people. But for God's sake, build something. Don't destroy uh, the societies. Don't destroy people. Don't destroy their hopes, just as India has done over the past, uh, over, over one year when it abolished uh, Kashmir's uh, uh, limited autonomy and people live by symbols. We had our own flag. Uh, that was taken away from us. We were reduced from a state of the Indian Union to a Union territory. And now, uh, what has set in over the last one year uh, in a very hurried way is what you would call the Israeli model. Uh, what Israel has been doing in Palestine, India is now in a very accelerated way doing in Kashmir. Apple trees are being chopped away just as uh, olive trees have been chopped away. Children are being arrested. People are being uh, put in jails for no apparent reason, especially in with, given the COVID situation. Laws are being changed. Demographics are being changed. So we are back to what happened to, or what has happened, what has happened to Palestine is now, of course, being copied by India. But again, I just want to assure your viewers and I want to assure myself that, you know, Modi's come and Modi's go. And uh, inshallah, we will one day uh, learn to uh, how to deal with all this situation because, uh, you know, uh, we will get what is due to us and India will get its karma. All right. The ultimate solution is self-determination. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Katwari, for being with us and sharing your uh, opinions. It was nice having you with us. Uh, viewers, let's see how people on social media see this situation. By posting this painting drawn by a Kashmiri student, Adhar Parvois tries to portray the sorrow of the people of Kashmir. Ajay Kamath believes that removal of the Article 370 by BJP was just a tool to further oppress the Kashmiris, while most parts of India don't care about them. In this tweet, Safina Nabi shares her observations of the situation of South Kashmir and criticizes the government for its actions in the region. This one is a short video which has recently gone viral, showing how the military forces treat a journalist from India today. Sir, uh, yeah, attack your highway. Referring to the previous post, Tusif Wani expressed concern about the situation of local journalists and how the military forces treat them. And Tony Ashoi also opines that the resistance of the people against oppression will eventually lead to the negotiation of the oppressors with the oppressed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was our episode covering the Indian-Pakistan border clashes along the line of control in Kashmir. To watch bits of our episodes and more updates, follow us on our social media platforms and make sure to give us feedback about what you think. We'll meet the same time, same day next week. Thanks for watching.